Welcome to the Successful Nurse Coach Podcast. On this podcast, Laura and Shelby, both board certified nurse coaches, show you how to make as much money as you want in private practice as a nurse coach. Hello and welcome back everybody to the Successful Nurse Coach Podcast. It is Shelby here today and I am interviewing, having a free flowy conversation with, storytelling with a wonderful friend of mine, a wonderful coach of mine, Sarah Kleiner. And Sarah Kleiner has been literally in my bubble ever since I started coaching. I've known Sarah for a really, really long time and we've been working together or... Yeah, I guess that's the way I would phrase it. We've been working together. She has been my coach for, gosh, the past almost two years or so, almost two years, creeping up on two years. Uh, And we are here today to talk to you about all things nervous system and nervous system work and probably trauma, all of the, all these buzzwords that float around in our community. Um, I wanted to bring in a well-studied Mm. I don't want to call you an expert, Sarah, because something tells you me you might be uncomfortable with that word, but a, a well-studied student of this practice of nervous system work, and um, you've been like deep, deep in the deep in the work for yourself for a few years now, and also training as a somatic practitioner um, for several years. So I'm excited to have you on to explain a little bit more of the type of work you do and then maybe give some people some like frame of reference of just how important this work is, especially for nurses who, in my experience, um, from my own experience, and then also coaching nurses are fried in the nervous system (laughs) department. Um, so Sarah, if you don't mind giving us a little like intro so people can, can get to know you a little bit, just maybe starting with the type of spaces that you hold and who, who you work with really around nervous system stuff. Yeah, thank you. No, I'm excited to be here. And yeah, like you said, it's been a big passion of mine doing this work both personally and professionally. Um, I've been in the coaching world since 2016. So gosh, six years, math, six years, eight years, long long time. I've been in the coaching world for since 2016. (laughs) And uh, in that space, I ha- it really has evolved. I have worked with people really on what helps you come back into your body, what helps come back into your creative space, get out of fight or flight, get out of anxiety, and come back to a place where we're really able to do and create and be who we want to be in the world. And that was a broad mission of mine when I first started. And as I've really gotten deeper into the work, Uh, of like what actually prevents us from doing that, not just in a catchphrase way, in a way like what's really there. (laughs) Uh, I was led to nervous system work and really uh, learning and it's benefited my body so much to understand what is keeping us in unhealthy patterns, whether that's feeling too anxious every day, whether that's feeling scared to launch something in the world, whether that's we can't use our voice, whether that's feeling like we're quote unquote too emotional and not knowing how to handle that. Like what are our normal patterns and then what can we do on our core level that helps us do and be and act as we want in the world on a big scale? Mm. Yeah. It's not subtle work, the work that you do with people, Sarah. It's, it's, it's like the, (laughs) I think, I think of, um, I think nurse coaches in particular are really, aware of like root cause stuff right especially in the coachy world where it can be like let's set a goal and then let's achieve that goal like it's not always that black and white and there's a reason why people our clients can't especially if it's like a repetitive behavior it's something that they say that they want but there's a lack of follow-through for some reason and i feel like this is a really big piece of the root cause on why some some of our clients can't like they say that they want something Mm -hmm. They seem to be motivated, but then there's like a disconnect of some sort. Um, And so I'm just really excited to get to talk about this in a little bit more detail because it's, I, we, we support a lot of nurse coaches who are like, my client says that they want to do this thing, but they can't. And then, then like the coach takes it personally, right? Of like, what question am I not asking? What, what 
motivating pep talk am I not giving? And it's just so much deeper than that. Yeah. And this work really shifts. And I know both you and I can speak to this very personally. It really shifts not only our understanding of the world and what our client might be going through physiologically, because again, it's really easy mindset to hear your client say, I want something, or this is my experience. But to be able to understand that their body's response always comes before our brain, that's physiologically how we're wired and understand what somebody's body response is telling us about their experience that their mind may not have picked up on or may not be fully aware it's happening or may not even be taking into the equation. When you can see that in clients, that really can shift the depth that you can go to with them. And then you yourself also end up having to do the work to be able to hold space for people's Mm -hmm. nervous system in that way. It's a really different version of you when you've really gone deep with your own system and you know your own patterns and edges and where you default to in different scenarios, that also will drastically shift the space that you can hold for others when you have worked on those patterns in yourself too. Yes. Let's start there, Sarah. So that, because this is not a foreign concept for, for nurse coaches, right? That we have this phrase of you cannot take your clients deeper than you have gone yourself, right? So if you are completely unaware of nervous system regulation or nervous system work, um, it's impossible for you to be able to pick up on it, to be able to assess, and then potentially be able to refer out or get further training if you want to do this type of work as well, right? Like it it just won't even be on your radar at all. And we sure as heck are not going to cover everything you need to know on this podcast today. But Sarah, you've worked with a few members of our community and you've held workshops for us. I've had you um, do like, you know, you know, nurse coaches, you know, you know, kind of like our, (laughs) our blocks. And we had touched on something before we began of uh, that a lot of um, or some of our community or maybe even some of the broader coaching community can see the value of nervous system work, but kind of opt themselves out of it. Do you mind speaking to that a little bit? Yeah, well, it's become a buzzword, which is good and bad. (laughs) Uh, I will, uh, I always say I'm like happy that there's more awareness and that there is more like that you hear the term nervous system and people like, I know what that is. If you had said that 10 years ago, uh, maybe the nurse community would have still known, but a lot of the broader community wouldn't know or wouldn't have known that something to work with. So that's good. But the challenge is now it's becoming oversimplified. It's becoming really oversimplified where someone's like, oh, yeah, I go on a walk and that helps my nervous system. Yes. And the level of nervous system work can go so much deeper where there's a difference Mm -hmm. between temporarily calming our system where we're like, okay, I felt stressed today. And then I know I go take a bath and I feel better. Or I know I take some deep breaths and I feel better. There we are like treating the symptoms that our nervous system has already shown us. Excellent. We need to know how to do that. And though there's a whole new level of starting to understand our nervous system's default patterns, big and small, it might be like, oh, when I'm on a sales call, I start to get really, really nervous. And it's harder for me to talk. Or when I go on stage, I start to feel super emotional and feel like I might burst out in tears. Or if a client brings up XYZ subject, I start to feel in my body like it's hard to sit in the chair because I don't really know what to do or I feel overwhelmed or I hang up on a client call and I immediately start to question everything I said or doubt that I was good enough on it. Those are all like Mm. really real scenarios that are showing you a default pattern your nervous system has that, again, we can treat that symptom. You might be like, oh, yeah, I was stressed and I went on a walk. But you can also work with the root of what in your system is responding to that. What in your what are the the stories, the situations, the uh, what is it pulling on from the past to get you there and work on treating and, um, yeah, changing your relationship with that experience of how you feel or that emotion of anxiety and actually start to make it so you may have a less intense reaction to it in the future. And so that's a really different depth of work when we're saying like, oh, instead of having to be like, oh, I always get anxious 
prepping for a client call because I'm worried if I'm going to do it right to be like, oh, I can actually see that client call on my calendar and not feel that experience in my body. Or I can have them bring up a really challenging subject and not have that same experience in my body to begin with. Those are drastically different versions of working with the nervous system mm. that I don't know that everyone recognizes how available of a depth there is that you can go to and really change things in your body or your client's body. Yeah, it's huge. It's huge. I remember when nervous system work was kind of like placed on my radar and it was before you and I had started really working together consistently. Like I had come to you in crisis mode a few times being like, fix me, I'm broken. Like, and there you met me where I was at. But um, I had a client in particular who would describe being on sales calls. She's like, I can feel myself leave my body right before I say my price out loud. This is a really powerful coach. This coach is really successful today. This is like a couple of years ago. And At the time, I didn't know, but that was like a type of like dissociation and freeze response from her. And basically I was like, I don't know how to support you in this. Go talk to Sarah. (laughs) Like this seems like something Sarah can handle, something Sarah can, can help you work through. Like I wasn't, I didn't have the knowledge to assess that situation very well. And she worked with you for a few times, Sarah, and I'm not even exactly sure like what you two worked on, but she was able to come back into our coaching container And she started closing sales consistently. Like it still was hard. It still was a challenge. There was still like that pattern, but we knew how to support herself better to keep her in her body so that um, her business could be successful. And like, so I want to mention that like, can we call it reprogramming? Is that the right term? Or like a reset of the way that you show up can have like really big impacts on all the areas of your life. Yeah. And I think reprogramming also sounds like a buzzword, so I'm always a little hesitant with that word, but it is it is working <laughs> on your body's first response, and it's working with that subconscious pattern, because like I was saying, that happens first, and so I think when people hear this work, they assume we're going to be working with just like the big traumas, which sometimes happens. I've definitely had people come mm-hmm. to me because they're having really big experiences with medical procedures, with, uh, you know, past relationship challenges, things like that. So it can be the big things that we know are like stressful or hard for our body, but it can also be lived experiences of like, oh, I've experienced chronic pain, digestion issues. I work with a lot of people with digestion issues, mm. uh, with anxiety on a daily basis, not sleeping well, uh, things like that, that there's just a core pattern our system has been on that we have to start to slowly but surely understand what it's responding to to be able to change that pattern. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Is it easy to put what a session is like into words for you, Sarah, or is that like a little tougher? There's easy. It's it depends on the intention. Um, where because again, sometimes people are coming to me with something that the topic is even hard to talk about, hard to think about. Like sometimes mm-hmm. we are talking about bigger traumas that we, and that's the nice thing about this work is we're working with what the system is ready to work with. And it's a little different than how people think of um, like therapy sometimes where they're like, okay, I'm going to have to tell them the whole story of how crappy X event was or how I feel about. And with this, it's like, we start to see how the body's responding, how the body's walking in the door and start to work around the edges of what people can handle. So again, sometimes the topic Mm -hmm. is something not as difficult to talk about, and we might be starting to talk about it and then starting to watch in the body what's happening. That's a huge part of my training is really learning to in-depth track people's bodies so that even though someone might be telling me a story they've told a thousand times where they're like, yeah, I'm fine with this. This is, I can recap to you what happened. I'm starting to notice in the body signs of what's happening for the nervous system while they're speaking about it. And as you watch Mm. that, then there are different tools you use to interrupt to slow down that process. So that because essentially, when we're starting to become dysregulated in any way, we are starting to have a rise either in our anxiety in the fight or flight, 
or we're starting to have a shutdown of our body being like, I just can't deal with this in any capacity and I'm shutting down against that or I'm fully dissociating out. And once I start to see a direction that goes, there's some really important moments. And these look different depending on what's happening in the system, but there are really important moments of how do we interrupt that or how do we make the body feel a little safer with this sensation or how do we move this stress energy in a way that allows the body to have a different experience with a memory, with an emotion, Mm -hmm. with a sensation that it's felt a million times. And that's a really key part is that like, we might be only used to, I have X emotion, and then I go to extreme stress, or I have, I think about X situation, and I totally shut down and can't handle it. And we're working on making digestible parts in that. So that again, the system Mm -hmm. can have a new pathway essentially in the future when it experiences similar experiences or memories in real life. So the exact tools of how change, but that's kind of the, uh, the premise as you go into working on something. Yeah. That (laughs) I don't mean to give a condescending compliment here, Sarah, but I was like, you did a really good job of describing that like vaguely, but also with examples. So I think that, um, Yeah, the how is still probably going to be murky until you experience a session for yourself and it's able to be tailored to you. Um, But that actually gives like a really beautiful overview. Um, I've had some friends of mine asking recently, like, what is somatic work? And I'm like, I don't know if I have the words to accurately like describe this in a way that doesn't make me sound like a lunatic. You know, it's it can it's very, very experiential and it is never the same twice. And even reflecting on like what brought me like what attracted me to what you were doing versus like what we work on now is just so different like it's so so different I uh for a quick recap and hopefully this doesn't oversimplify too much but I when I got diagnosed with my aneurysm I was convinced that the answer to all of my problems in that time was to start meditating and to start meditating deeply for like an hour twice a day. I got a hold of Joe Dispenza's work and I was like, this is the key to my future. And I was so anxious all the time. And for a few weeks, like that meditation practice did really work for me. Like it it brought me into a new state. It helped. Um, But then I don't know if it was a specific incident that happened. I don't recall that being the case, but it, I couldn't drop in to a meditative state anymore. Like my body was just like an electrical wire. And I was, it felt like I was vibrating just all of the time. And there was a part of my nurse brain that just knew that being highly, highly anxious, also learning to live with a very problematic aneurysm that could rupture at any moment. Those two things didn't mix for me. Like I was like, one, I can't control the aneurysm. I think I can control the anxiety. And that's, when I came and I don't even know that you made any sort of post or marketing or anything about anxiety, Sarah, I think it was a something to do with like a deeper connection to spirituality or, or something like kind of not unrelated, but to me at the time unrelated. And I was like, tell me about what you're doing. And then like, that's what began all of this. And so we've worked on, on the anxiety piece that then rippled into being able to like sleep because I wasn't sleeping through the night before we worked together. I went from working night shifts to having a newborn, like my circadian rhythm was just all shot and um, learning how to feel anger and then addressing some people pleasing tendencies that I have. Like, it's just like, slowly unraveled this ball of yarn over time. And a lot of that work was really vulnerable and really tearful and really like I had to, you've really helped me be able to feel my feelings and not be afraid of it so much anymore. Um, And then this past weekend, we had the awesome opportunity to go be with you in person for a retreat. And I didn't cry once And I was kind of like bummed that I didn't cry at all. And you're like, no, but see, like now you can experience this range of emotion and it doesn't elicit a sort of like overwhelm, right? Like it doesn't, it's, there's a different way to experience the same emotions. 
And I'm still sitting with that. Like, my brain is still blown just wide open from that insight. <laughs> um, like I said, we've been working together for probably close to two years at this point, and it's uh, it, it's kind of wild to me how the work evolves over time. Yeah, it evolves a lot, and that's one of the, I think, really important things of this conversation, too, is that it can both show a lot of results really quickly, and there's a lot that we can do when it's given time, because it, it's both. I've seen people like mm-hmm. have huge shifts very where they're like, oh, I really didn't expect to be able to make a big difference in the anxiety that I've felt for 10 years, for 20 years in a couple weeks. And then the the longer you do it, the more that your body starts to have capacity to look at things that were maybe at one point too much for the body to acknowledge. Mm -hmm. Where like, for example, in your story of what you're describing, like working with anger, one of my favorites, where most, many, many women especially have a really complex experience with anger for so many reasons, uh, weren't taught to how to express it ourselves, maybe negative experiences being around other people in life who were expressed anger in an unhealthy way. It's a big one. But people don't tend to be yeah. ready to go there like on day one. <laughs> if it were and don't tend to have that where it's like it wouldn't be an accessible thing to stay with our body and anger and understand it or understand why we have this experience. So it but then as we have time and as our body is able to A learn the process and start to feel safe in the process, but B like tackle some of these things that tend to keep us uh, feeling kind of overwhelmed or feeling like we're anxious all the time or feeling kind of out of our bodies as we start to tackle bigger, small things on that list, we have capacity to go deeper in other areas. And so then there's so much, um, yeah, gold that can be accessed there as we're like, okay, now I can do this. And exactly what you said, have comfort in it. It is shocking. Uh, and it's really something that I didn't even realize in my own story, how much it would happen. Because again, even with like anger, I've done deep work there. And all I would know is I would be like, I get really frustrated. And then I cry. That was my Mm. pattern where I'd be like, I know I get really frustrated about something. And then I cry. And I was like, I don't think I get angry, really. That was my own answer. I was like, I don't really see there. Huh. It was a nervous system response that felt really unsafe with anger, got maxed out, would go to tears. Tears can be a form tears can be a form of our body trying to release overwhelm energy. That would regulate it and then come back. And then what do you know? Now I'm not angry. My body has effectively made a large circle where it avoided the sensation of anger. Mm. And so yeah. those type of things are things that I would never have known I needed to work with. But once I actually looked at that, it's like, wow, how important is it that we can get angry enough? If, if something's not, anger is a boundary. If we, it's to be able to say no to something or to be able to be like, wow, I wasn't treated with respect or wow, that's not an okay situation and have that sensation in our body and be able to be with it and see what it's asking for us, see what it's telling us. That can be life changing to be able to stay with mm-hmm. that. But it's not something that usually people mentally know ahead of time, like, oh, I know I need to work with it because we've effectively avoided it in our bodies for a long time. Oh, yes. Um, Yeah, it's. And I just think that like anger is such a, a beautiful example. And then I'm thinking of like how before this work I avoided. So for me, anger was like a complete overwhelm experience to where I would feel it like head to toe. I would get super hot. My blood pressure would spike. And I, then I didn't know what to do. Like, I just kind of felt like now I'm all charged up. And then like, what do I do with this? I don't want to like punch a wall or scream at somebody, but like, what do I do? What do I do with this? And I felt stuck. So then I would, again, try not to feel angry or talk myself, like dilute the experience so that I, that I just didn't get to that point. Um, but now being able to to view anger through the lens of like it's it's sacred to me like it's a it's a red flag of like that a boundary's been violated that there is something something that happened that is begging for my attention and so now i have this whole other way to view that emotion rather than it's too much and i can't and i don't know what to do with it um and 
like even just thinking about being able to have a better relationship with that emotion has also allowed something you said to me once about um, how anger is like a big feeling, but so is like joy at the same time. And I felt like I couldn't feel joy or it felt like short and fleeting to feel super joyous or super happy. Um, And how sometimes like the body doesn't know, right. They're just both big feelings. And so if you're shutting down one, then you're likely shutting down the other. Um, How being able to be friends with my anger and see it for what it is and not what I've made it mean. And now I'm also able to experience like more capacity for the good feelings, for the happy feelings, for being in a joyous state for not like two seconds at a time. It's, it's more, it's extended, um, has been really beautiful as well. And I just think with that specific example, like expressing your anger might feel challenging, but I think of how it just ripples into my life, right? That ripples into motherhood, being able to feel joy that ripples into my business, that ripples into my marriage, that ripples into every relationship that I have. Um, like how important is that? Like that's, that's not something many business coaches will tell you, learn to feel your anger so you can earn more money. Like that's (laughs) not not the typical approach. But it's so important because, yeah, one of my teachers, when he said that, he was like, we can't just numb out on one side of the spectrum with emotions. And I remember when he Mm. said that, I was like, damn it. (laughs) I was like, what? You can't just avoid the grief or the anger or the whatever, but have more of the happiness. And he was like, no, it's all it's all sensation. Our body, our minds add meaning. Our body just experiences sensation. And so a big Mm. anything, any emotion is a set of sensation. And the, so we have to be able to help our body have that so that it's like, wow, I can feel celebration and I can feel grief and I can feel joy and I can feel anxiety or I can know my anxieties there and have a bigger capacity to know how to work with it before it feels like too much. And it's, it's frustrating, especially, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people listening have done a lot of their own work in other ways. So I know it can be super a annoying and frustrating message to be like, but I've spent all this time working with X theme or I've done 75 healing modalities or I've done X, Y, Z. And all of those things are still, again, they may have been part of the reason your body is at a place now where it has an understanding of its experience or where it has capacity to even think about doing these things. It could have still all mm. got you there. And there is a depth of yeah, of learning that we all still have. The other thing is life keeps moving and we keep having new experiences piled on to what we had last year or yesterday or the day before. And so it's, again, frustrating and that's a valid emotion to feel like, oh, I need to keep working with it. But also um, that that's all part of the pot of emotions and sensations that we are, that we get to work with to be like, can I just make sure that I know how to, increase my capacity that I feel like I've spent time with these emotions that I feel like my body has healthy ways to express it. Because when we don't, when we are actively choosing to numb out from it, that's when all sorts, again, we're, we're squashing our nervous system, our body's first response. And so that can lead to chronic holding, to tension, to digestion issues, to uh, pain, to behavioral things where it's like, I just can't talk about this, or I can't, I feel overwhelmed in my relationship, all that stuff starts to come out over time. And so being like, can I just intentionally leave space for it? And again, it's all done step by step in a way that it's not going to feel like diving into the deep end. The entire point is to do it in a way where your system can digest it, but really start to unwind that so that Mm -hmm. you can have that full spectrum of emotions and feel as safe as possible in, in it. Mm hmm. So good. I hope that people listening to this after hearing what you just said, feel encouraged, not as like, oh, shit, there's some there's another thing that I have to do and pursue. And uh, but like if you are yo-yoing with your anxiety or any other any other like symptomatic thing that like there's so much hope for healing and for regulation and. Uh, as someone who's been doing this for a while as a client, it feels so good. It feels so good and so luxurious and all of the things, all of the 
it's kind of like all of the things your heart knows are possible, right? But seem impossible of like, does life get to really be that amazing? Like, yeah, we just have to, we have to support you to be able to experience it all. And um, I also hope that as, as nervous system work gets even more popular, that there are more practitioners <laughs> out there in the world that are known so that people have places to go. Yeah, because it's really different. It's a really different experience. Again, when we're doing the nervous system work that's working with the root cause, it's considered trauma resolution work. Again, I use that word lightly because sometimes we know it's big trauma. Sometimes it's literally just resolving how stressed we've felt about you know, our day yesterday or whatever it might mm-hmm. be. But it's a really different sensation because we're actually, again, doing it in digestible parts. And so it's helping your body get back as even, again, not to say it's not challenging at times, but the entire premise is to help your body digest sensations that it's had all the time anyway. I've been talking about this with a lot of clients uh, recently. It's less about like, let's dig up some random thing in the past you haven't thought about. It's more like, let's deal with the sensations that are honestly and you would know it if you sat down and thought about them in your body all the time where you're like, yeah, I do mm-hmm. always feel a little on edge or I do wake up feeling kind of nervous or I feel like I run out of energy at come 2 p.m. because I just feel emotionally exhausted or I feel like there's sadness or anger in me I haven't done. You know it somewhere because you're carrying it all the time. And that's the stuff we're starting to help the body digest Versus like, let's dig up X random thing that happened when you're five, just for the sake of it. We're actually working (laughs) with what you're carrying and with what you're, um, and it's familiar and it can feel so relieving. Cause again, I know, uh, one of my teachers said this and I actually like brought tears to my eyes because he was like, when your body is constantly trying to protect you from something. And sometimes what it's trying to protect you from is your own sensations, your own sadness, the depth Mm -hmm. of anger you have, the depth of anxiety. When your body is trying to protect you from that, it's fucking exhausting. Like it is so exhausting to constantly be trying to help you not feel that or not feel overwhelmed or to guard you from that or to have you acting in a way in day-to-day life where it's really desperately trying to save you from having to deal with that. That is so tiring. And when we can start to piece by piece, take some of that weight away in ways that, again, sometimes you consciously know and sometimes you don't. But when you can just start to be like, God, what if I didn't have to be on edge for that? What if I didn't have to protect myself so hard because it was digested, it was processed in a way that felt okay? like letting go of some of that weight is massive. It's just massive impact in how you can operate on a day-to-day basis. Mm-hmm. It's huge. It's huge. And I, I think back to when I was working in the ER or working in the hospital, like how... I didn't even know how stressed out I was in in that dynamic cuz like the job is inherently stressful, right? It's it's life or death and so that in itself is stressful, but then I was just like shutting down every body sensation that I had. So like hungry, don't have time. Thirsty, so sorry, don't have time. You got to pee, you can at 7:20 p.m. when you got here at 6:30 a.m. Like there's just I just looking back, I, I just want to give previous me like a big hug. Uh, cause like no one was telling me any different, right? Like a lot of that was, um, an assumed way that I should be showing up in that role. I remember eating a sandwich over a trash can once. And one of the nurses like leaned over to me and she was like, Hey, nobody's dying. Feel free to go sit down. And I was like, I can't like, I just like literally cannot sit right now, you know? And, um, how it was like training ground to ignore everything for for me and i remember one of the very first like aha light bulb moments like nurses know what fight or flight response is we know what the nervous system is we know all of those things but again it's like talked about in such a way in our training that it's like 
the big the big T trauma, you know, like a car accident or abuse or, you know, like something that happens to other people. And um, one of my first big insights was that I was in a flight or a fight response because I could go 12 hours without peeing and not like pee all over myself. You know, it's because my digestive system like actually was shutting down for that, for that 12 hours. Mm-hmm. And I just in that moment, I was like, Every nurse has to know that this exists. Every nurse needs this work in some capacity. There's no nurse that is exempt from this, from needing this at all. Like, I have not met a single well-regulated nurse ever. <laughs> and I think I could probably pick them out now, but, like, I, like I've never met one. Yeah, well, and it, that's, it, and it's, again, it's so important to, that's, to understand that and again not we're not trying to have like fight or flight state be the villain all the time like sometimes yeah like we are in go mode we need to see right so many patients or we have a life or death but we also it's not a sustainable place to stay and so that is part of what nervous system work is it's not like oh I'm a zen cucumber every minute of the day and I feel great <laughs> and calm and peaceful it's like no we actually want your full fluctuation of your emotions like we we're talking about mm-hmm. with anger like there might be times where you need to be in that sympathetic rise of like yeah there's a lot or this is stressful I need to stay on my toes I need to speak up but we need movement in that we can't have you there 12 to 14 hours every day of the week and the longer we're in that state the harder it is to turn off. A lot of times people really get stuck in yeah. it where we're like, uh, we're just there, even though it's the weekend, even though we have a week off, even though we've left the job years ago, even if we've left the job 20 years ago, there's still mm-hmm. that default part. And what's so interesting is, again, the good side of it, I can relate to this a lot, I was in that mode for a long time. I used to work in crisis communications, so different than nursing, similar It's actually in a way more ridiculous that we were as on edge as we were, because at least we're saying it actually is life or death. This was not, but we were treated as though it was. Uh, And coming out of it, I started my business and I, that same energy really propelled me forward for a while in my business where I was a go-getter, ambitious, overachiever. Let's do all the things. It doesn't matter. Let's work all the hours, push through, like, that energy was fully got channeled into that, which had its benefits. It had its, I joked all the time. I'm like, I'm run through fire and we'll get there and we'll take it on. And then you burn Mm -hmm. that. Well, I burnt out hard. (laughs) Yeah. That was like, wow, what do you know? I can't just keep attracting clients from a place of anxiety. I can't keep hosting events where I feel so stressed beforehand that it's exhausting. I can't like you could, I couldn't, do that and process other things in life as life had its own twists and turns of, you know, maybe family time or friend things that came up. It was like, wow, it's really hard to divert energy there because it's all going here. And Mm. that was an example where, again, some of that really go-getter energy was great, but it actually became a huge mission of mine to be like, what would it be like to create not from anxiety? (laughs) to like yeah. create something, to do things, to uh, work with clients. And at the time I was like, I don't know, I might just sleep all day. Would I create anything? Would I do anything? Like mm-hmm. that's how drastically different it felt in my body to say like, if we were like, I even had, and this is, I now know physiologically common. I even had a fear response of shutting down that part of me because I was like, well, that's the part of me that gets things done. That's the part of me that started a business. If I shut that down, would I make money? Would I get out of bed every day? Would I? And that is, again, a physiological sign that we're in our fight or flight mode because it's it's convincing us there's still a threat out there and we can't slow down. We can't take a break. We can't rest because we'll miss X threat and that's dangerous. And so it can be a really more challenging process than we think to really get our body to feel safer slowing down and really get our body to feel okay with that. And then the really interesting thing is, you know, spoiler alert on the story, like my business actually got bigger. I had more capacity 
Whereas instead of right. feeling so exhausted from everything I did, I was able to take more clients in the day, or I was able to have more creative ideas because I had the energy for it, or I was able to just enjoy it more, frankly, even if nothing else changed, but I was able to enjoy it more and be with a client and be like, God, this is fun. Like, <laughs> this is cool. We're doing this instead of having that feeling after the session, when it's over and complete, I would mm -hmm. in it, even as I'm doing it, I would have that sensation. And it's just a yeah. drastically different relationship. So we're learning how to use those different states of our nervous system too. how do I keep those parts of me that are good and that are helpful and get goals done and productive? And how do I come down and interrupt that so that I can have times of true rest, digest, relax, be present and have both? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, this is such a good point because... I see I see this happen across the spectrum of of our our the coaches that we work with that have hit a certain financial like bar and then they get there and they're they're still like now I'm unable to like rest in this place like there's still like that that fear response that you were talking about of is it consistent will I be able to recreate it um I need help I need support I don't know how to ask for that and then so, like, I think that sometimes we can get, um, we think that money is going to solve the problem, that money is going to provide the space. Not true. Money will not provide the space that you need to, like, relax and have capacity to relax. And then I also see this kind of, like, on the other spectrum of people who are just starting out who are either leaving a really toxic job, maybe a really toxic relationship within the past, like, four or five years, and they haven't rested in a long time. And then we're trying to create something that feels really in alignment and really that feels good and that we're excited to show up for and, like, we can't access it at all. Like, the dream is there. The vision is there. But then... then it's really hard to create a coaching practice when you are feeling or when you can't connect to your feelings like in any capacity at all. Cause they're, you're, yeah. you're, you're fried. And um, so I, I see how this, this approach in both scenarios can just be so beneficial again, to increase capacity to create or increase capacity to rest so that you can create. Yeah, because especially coming out of those high stress scenarios, whether it's a relationship or a job, our bodies had to shut down some of the emotions or sensations to get us through it. And that's not a, I, uh, again, I yeah. think there can be sometimes like guilt or like a shame or, and it's not, it's like, if we're in a really high stress situation, we can't, it, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to stand up right if you felt every mm -hmm. single emotion that was coming into your body throughout the day. And so it's a super important like phase that our nervous system goes through being like, nah, I can't feel that. And then even after we're out of it, it's a really important process then to slowly introduce some of that of like, how, like, what do I feel in my body? And what are some positive sensations I can start to feel into my body and slowly start to thaw that uh, without expectation, it goes from zero to 100. Because it's like, we want the system to have time to digest that at a rate that feels okay at a rate that's like, yeah, I can start to start to be with that and not have it feel overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And so that's like a really important, a really important part of that is to work with that in the body. And then same thing with the person who's been in fight or flight or go mode. Again, there's probably something in your system that initially, and we like to blame it on the job, I'm going to say a sort of uncomfortable <laughs> truth. A lot of us who went into that job, we had something that made us feel okay in that situation that started before the work. <laughs> yeah. And again, that may not be true a hundred percent of the time, but like a lot of us stepped into, and I say a lot of us, cause again, I did it too. And I know exactly why from my work, why I felt so comfortable in a, an environment that kept me in fight or flight. I know exactly what part of my body was more comfortable in that and quote unquote thrived and was good at it, mm -hmm. but be, where, where that all came from. And we really have to then gently start to work with ourselves and be like, gosh, what is that response in my body? And how do I start to change it so that 
I can have choice in it. So then instead of it feeling like this is just where I operate or this is where I thrive, we can start to experience the different states of being and have choice of like, do I want to go back into that environment? And if I do, I'll be prepared differently. And if I don't, then awesome. Wow, I'm going to make a whole different life choice on how I, Mm, where I feel comfortable and what state is my default there. Oh, man, I hope that landed in a way that calls people out is not the phrase I want to use, but that, that like illuminates another perspective for people of like, have we ever considered that this might be can, you know, just like conditional, um, programming that led us to this path to begin with. And, um, again, just speaks to the depth of how deep this work can be right is like we we start at the top and then it it's like an iceberg you you keep going and you keep going and yeah. you build you build space um mm, so good all right sarah well i have one more question i want to ask you is there anything else that feels important to mention kind of like while we're on this topic before before i wrap up here yeah i think the only other thing i'll say on that too is like i said that's where understanding that example we just gave of like, oh, what led me to this work and what led me to this place that also can even show again, how sometimes it gets into epigenetics and ancestral work too. And how mm-hmm. long it's like, was I brought into this state of being for a certain reason? Was this here? And again, none of this was, is with guilt or shame, but it shows how deep it can really go. And why, when I say at the beginning, like, oh, we're not just talking about taking deep breaths and, uh, and soothing it, we might be working with something that is as far back as ancestral and um, epigenetics and how trauma is passed down or how nervous system state is passed down. And again, we're not doing it just for the sake of saying we did, (laughs) being like, great, now I've worked with my ancestral trauma. We're doing it as long as there's meaning in your lived experience every day. So if there is, if it is, it's connecting, we're only going to those places if it's connecting to something that's showing up for you on a regular basis Mm -hmm. in your life now. So it's never for the sake of saying we did. It's following those cues of wow, that actually might be why you're having that physical symptom, that emotional symptom, things like that. So really important to not make it seem like we're just chasing it for the sake of it. We're following your Mm. body's and your nervous system's lead as we learn what to work with too. Yeah, so beautiful. It's like the definition of a client-led experience. Mm -hmm. Truly, truly. Um, Okay, One more question here for you, Sarah, Uh, and this might be cracking open Pandora's box, but I'm thinking like the top thing Um, since nervous system, even since I've started working with you has become like I see it more on Instagram, on the Internet, on Facebook. And I don't know if that's just because now I know that red cars exist. Red cars are everywhere. Right. Like that might be the case. But um, now that it's now that it's a buzzword, now that more people know, now that um, there's potential that there's like diluted meanings of somatic work out there. Is there like a hot take that you have that you want to make sure people understand about somatic work, about somatic experiencing and working with a practitioner? Um, that's really important. Yeah. And I think just kind of like I was saying at the beginning, just that there are levels to it and, Somatic work at its highest umbrella is just anything that com- is body based, is anything that is comes back to your body's experience first. So dance work can be somatic work, yoga work, and all of these are very valid and important things to work with. But it's also understanding what is my intention stepping into this work. And what is, because if we're trying to address some of those bigger, deeper things, there can be a different level that comes from Again, usually a big differentiator, I say, is like trauma resolution work through the nervous system versus trauma. And even trauma informed is becoming a buzzword. So, but trauma resolution work is very different than even trauma informed is, or is very different than just general somatic work is. So, there's a lot of those different keywords to look for. Mm -hmm. And then to just really be talking with a practitioner about if they're not, the best way I can put it is if they've never talk to you one-on-one about your system, it's unlikely to, that you're able to do trauma resolution work. <laughs> like mm-hmm. I want to almost say it's impossible, but it's at least highly unlikely because again, 
everyone's body, everyone's system comes in responding to things differently. You could uh, like the same story or the same situation could happen to 10 people and all their bodies would respond differently. And so there has to be at least some level of someone who sees your system, who knows your system, working with it to really start to change those patterns. Otherwise, you might get insights, you might experience your pattern, you might be able to get some understanding. uh, But it's really hard without someone seeing you one on one, at least at some points, once they've seen you Mm. and know your system, there can be a lot of power in group work and group sessions and workshops and things like that. But you'll likely need those one on one touch points too, just to get all the way to the depth of what your system is holding. Mm. Yes, 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 yes. And that is a great segue, Sarah, into briefly talking about the the work that you offer with clients. Uh, It's a beautiful blend of both that, of both group work and one-on-one work. Um, Like I said, if uh, you are interested in this work, you will likely see me in that space hanging out with Sarah for the foreseeable future. Um, So if you, if you want to, if you want to not only do this work for yourself, but come hang out with a familiar face, I am in that space uh, with a group of amazing women who are also doing, doing this work too. Um, But yeah, if, if something about this podcast speaks to you, if something about Sarah speaks to you, even if it just like piques your curiosity, take that as a little nudge, take that as something worth exploring. Um, We're going to leave Sarah's contact info in the show notes here. So you can find her on the internet and slide into her DMS or her email and ask more questions. Um, But this is again, like a hill I've been willing to die on for a while now of like, we all nurses in particular, I could probably say everyone on the planet, but nurses in particular (laughs) need, need this type of support. And also, Sarah's really amazing to where, like, if she's not your girl, she likely knows someone who can be your practitioner, too, which is something I really appreciate about you. Yeah, I think it, well, it's important because everyone has different backgrounds. Everyone has different, you know, we're working with different things. So that's something. Please don't hesitate to reach out. I, yeah, am always big about we're going to find you the right resource, whether it's me or not. That's the point isn't <laughs> point isn't yeah. being about me. It's about making sure this work is really important. Um, and it's really important that we have practitioners that we trust. It's really important that we're creating safe space for our system in a way that feels safe individually, not generic safe space in a way that is assumed safe, something that your body actually feels okay enough in. Um, and so again, making sure we find the right, the right fit for that is super Mm. important. Yeah. So beautiful. So beautiful. All right, team. Well, like I said, if you're feeling the nudge, reach out to Sarah, inquire more and ask more questions. Um, but Sarah, thank you for being on, on the podcast today. We really appreciate you and your expertise and your passion. I really do. I'll be scheduling a one-on-one with you here shortly so you can you can expect a notification from me but thanks for giving us your time today i really appreciate it of course thank you i always appreciate the chance to get the message out it's important yeah all right team we will see you on the flip side next week come join us in the facebook group the successful nurse coaches and we'll see you next time bye